Welcome back to YouTube. I'm again from in-depth tech reviews. And here is another comparison between Siri on iOS 15 beta and Google Assistant on Android 12 beta 1. I did the same comparison same time last year between Siri on iOS 14 and Google Assistant on Android 11 and both were in beta back then. You should also expect another comparison between them later this year with the final release of both operating systems. So without further ado, let's jump in. First things first, on the left I have my Pixel 4a running Android 12 beta 1 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max running iOS 15 on the right. Now let's take a look at the release notes of iOS 15 to see what are the improvements Apple did. Siri got 12 new improvements, 7 out of which I will be able to compare against Google Assistant in this video. And the first one is the offline support. As per Apple, Siri can now process many requests offline including timers and alarms, phone, messaging, sharing, app launch, control audio playback and settings. So let's turn off the Wi-Fi and cellular data connection on both phones and keep the SIM card active to be able to send messages and make calls. And now let's begin. Open photos. Open calendar. Set a timer for five minutes. Set the alarm at 5 a.m. Turn off Bluetooth. Call my other number. Send the text message to my other number. Hi, how are you today? Open photos. Which app would you like to use? Photos, photos, mobile, or Google photos? Photos. Open calendar. Set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, counting down. Set the alarm at 5 a.m. I set your alarm for 5 a.m. tomorrow. Turn off Bluetooth. Okay, Bluetooth is now off. Call my other number. Calling my other number. Mobile. Send the text message to my other number. What do you want to say? Hi, how are you today? Ready to send it? Yes. Now let's try the offline audio playback control and here I have some downloaded songs in YouTube Music and the Apple Music on both phones. Next song. Previous song. Stop. So in the offline support category, Siri is certainly capable of taking commands in five different areas as claimed in the release notes, which is not something new to Google Assistant, but a welcome addition to Siri. The second improvement to compare is the speed. It says here Siri is incredibly fast because of the on-device processing, but I'm using a Pixel 4a for Google Assistant, which is a budget phone, and the 12 Pro Max has a very powerful CPU. To minimize the gap between the two, I have all the apps that I will use in this comparison running in the background on both devices. Then I will try 14 back-to-back -back commands on both to see which one will finish them faster. So let's begin. Open Facebook. Open Instagram. Set the alarm at 8 a.m. Remind me to call my friend tomorrow morning. Add milk and the cheese to my shopping list. Take a note. This is a test. Turn off all lights. Turn on Bluetooth. Increase the display brightness by 5%. Show me Georgia photos. Convert $100 to AED. Convert 179 centimeters to inches. Show me the weather. Play music. Google Assistant took 1 minute and 6 seconds. 
it did the 14 commands correctly and the best part is I didn't need to touch the phone even once. But Siri will require me to either use the magic word or touch the on-screen button, so let's see what's gonna happen. Open Facebook. Open Instagram. Set the alarm at 8 a.m. Remind me to call my friend tomorrow morning. Add milk and the cheese to my shopping list. Take a note. What you wanted to say? This is a test. In this command, when I said this is a test, Siri thought that I'm checking on her instead of dictating my note and replied back everything checks out, which is incorrect. Turn off all lights. Turn on Bluetooth. Increase the brightness by 5%. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Please. Show me Georgia photos. Convert $100 to AED. Convert 179 centimeters to inches. Show me the weather. Play music. Siri took 1 minute and 8 seconds with 2 errors, but it's definitely faster than before. The only problem is I have to press a button or say the magic word, which did slow it down. But Google Assistant is far ahead because it took 2 seconds less, 0 errors, and the Pixel 4a has a CPU that's 3 times less powerful than the 12 Pro Max. So now it's time for today's sponsor, Mocket by Wondershare. Wondershare Market is an online platform for UX, UI, web designers, product managers, marketing specialists, and testers. It is one of the great softwares has been invented to create great prototypes and UI designs with ease. What's more, it also provides Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu versions. The tool lets you create prototypes in less than 10 minutes thanks to the 500 plus libraries of icons, components, screens, and templates. And personally, I like the fact that it's based on the cloud and has support for features like team members, feedback sharing, and more. Plus, along with the prototypes, Mocket has also added support for designs and flowcharts with mind mapping support coming soon. Wondershare Market is available to try for free right now, so go ahead and check it out from the link in the description below. The third comparison will include two improvements, the sharing and refer to contacts. Under sharing it says Siri can now share items on screen like photos, web pages, content from Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Maps locations and more. All you need to do is just saying send this to and then the contact name. It will either send the item as a link or a screenshot depending on the content you are sharing. And the refer to contacts improvement will allow Siri to send the messages to or call certain contacts if you have the contact or the conversation showing on the screen. So let's see how Siri will handle this. Send this to my other number. 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 Call this number. Reply, I'm on my way. Send this to my other number. Both did six commands exactly the same, but when I asked Google Assistant to share the location showing on the screen, it shared the screenshot instead of the actual location link. While Siri did exactly the opposite, which is certainly better. So I will give an extra point to Siri in this comparison. The next improvement to talk about is maintaining context. Apple says in iOS 15, Siri is better in understanding the context when you ask follow-up questions, which is one of the areas that Google Assistant do really well. So let's see if Siri can do the same or not. Is Global Village still open? There are a few locations. Here are their business hours for today. 
The first one. How long does it take to get there? By car, the trip to Global Village is 19 minutes. Is Global Village still open? One option I found is Global Village on Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road. Is that the one you want? Yes. Global Village on Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road is not open now. How long does it take to get there? Sorry, we don't seem to be navigating anywhere. If you'd like directions, just say, get directions to, wherever. Show me the actors of the Conjuring 3 movie. Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson, Sterling Gerrans. Who's the director? The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It was directed by Michael Chaves. Show me the actors of The Conjuring 3 movie. Okay, I found this on the web for Show Me the Actors of The Conjuring 3 movie. Check it out. Who's the director? Here's what I found. How far is it from Dubai to Abu Dhabi? It's 146 kilometers to get to Abu Dhabi from Dubai local movers by car. What about Ajman? 22.3 C Street is 51.2 kilometers away from Ajman. How far is it from Dubai to Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi is about 92 miles from Dubai by car. What about Ajman? Here's Ajman. Show me London photos. The ones with buses. Show me London photos. The ones with buses. Show me London photos with buses. I couldn't find any matches in your photos library. Here are some images from the web. How tall is the Great Pyramid of Giza? The Great Pyramid of Giza is 139 meters tall. Where is it located? The Great Pyramid of Giza is at Al Haram, Naslid El Semen, Al Giza Desert, Giza Governorate, Egypt. How tall is the Great Pyramid of Giza? The Great Pyramid of Giza is 481 feet tall. Where is it located? I'm sorry, I don't have any places to show. In maintaining context, Siri was really bad. It only answered one follow-up question, so Apple has some work to do here. The next improvement is announced notifications. Siri can now read your notifications if your iPhone is connected to AirPods second gen or later. This is one of the things that I've been able to do on my Pixel Buds for a while, and Siri is doing it equally good. So here is a quick sample from both. Emad Hassin said, Hi, how are you? From Gmail, Emad Hassin. Test email, get Outlook for Android. 6:59 p.m. Message from my other number and notifications from Gmail. My says, "How are you?" Gmail, in-depth tech reviews, test email. Last but not least, control smart home devices at a specific time. For example, you can ask Siri to turn off your lights at 7 p.m., but I found this feature to only work if you have a HomePod or Apple TV connected to your network. And here is what happens if you don't have any. Turn off office lights at 6.30 a.m. Sorry, I can't schedule that without a home hub set up. Google Assistant can also do the same, so I disconnected my Chromecast and the Google Home Mini to see if it's gonna work or not. Turn off office lights in five minutes. All right, I'll turn off wall lamp, the desk lamp, and the ladder lamps at 7.26 p.m. And yes, it works, so the win goes to Google Assistant. So these are the improvements Apple made to Siri and how they are compared to Google Assistant. To be honest, the improvements are underwhelming and Siri still lags behind. But I'm gonna wait for the final release of iOS 15 to see if things will change. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my comparison between Siri on iOS 15 and Google Assistant on Android 12. I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.